ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this regular Nintendo Com video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things out with AMD, specifically the 9th of January 2019, which is the date, of course, that AMD are planning to hold their CES 2019 conference. During the conference, we expect the company to reveal a lot of information, and indeed, AMD have decided to tease us with a few details of the products that they are going to be discussing. Now, as a slight aside, the 9th of January is a couple of days before I fly back to the UK, so it works out rather nicely in terms of my schedule, I must admit. Anyway, uh, the website Hexus.net has managed to grab a couple of quotes from AMD regarding what they're going to be discussing during CES, and this is combined with uh, the official CES website. Now, the official CES website is pretty vague, but Hexus.net did get the quote that AMD would be, and I quote, solving some of the world's toughest challenges to the future of gaming, entertainment and virtual reality, and the potential to redefine modern life. And this is the key part. They would also be uh, revealing details of the world's first 7nm high-performance CPUs and GPUs. In addition to that, Lisa Su was uh, discussing things uh, during a blog slash interview uh, with the official CES website, and during the Q&A, she uh, said that the keynote would be a, quote, major milestone from AMD, and the CEO would be joined by special guests on stage from different industries who will they work with, and they confirmed that we'll be making some exciting announcement about our next generation products. Unfortunately, she did not go on to reveal more details. Now, the wording there is really interesting because from the wording, it seems that there's details, not an actual launch. So that most likely means that we're going to see at best product announcements. My personal opinion is we're gonna get a pretty good rundown of what CPUs and GPUs that AMD are planning to launch on both the consumer side, which of course is you and I, whether you're a gamer, whether you're a content creator, and then, of course, you've got the non-retail consumers, the likes of Dell and Microsoft, who are purchasing Epic processors or Vega process, uh, graphics processors for the sake of the cloud and scientific computing. 2018 was a really interesting year in terms of computing. We had the bust, of course, of cryptocurrency mining. We had the release of various expensive NVIDIA GPUs, and AMD firmly solidifying themselves as a competitor to Intel in the CPU space. So 2019 is really a chance for the company to continue that meteoric rise. Now, for my mind, the CPU side of things, I don't think that AMD can really do super amount wrong here. Even if all of the rumors, all of the speculation regarding the Zen 2 processors is incorrect. Let's assume that AMD, just a worst case scenario, released an eight core 16 thread processor, but the clock speeds are increased and we see the IPC gains that we've heard so much about, 10 to 15%. It's still enough, assuming the pricing is good enough, to hold off uh, the 9900K. In fact, it would be very unlikely to say that the 9900K would be the better processor in virtually any task particularly when you also factor in the improvements to AVX support and floating point performance and so on and so on, stuff that we've discussed so many times before. But even if all of the rumors turn out to be inaccurate and we only see a bump to 12 cores, which I personally suspect AMD won't go uh, that route, I suspect it will be 16, but let's assume it's 12 cores, it still means that they are most likely going to be able to tackle Ice Lake when Intel launches it. Of course, all of that said, we don't know what Intel's clock speeds are going to be and what other architectural changes are going to bring to the table with Intel. But even so, 2019 is going to be a very fascinating year, in my opinion, anyway, for processors. When it comes to graphics cards, well, things are a lot more up in the air. And the pricing of the RTX series of cards is definitely higher than what we had with the previous generation, like the 1080 Ti was nowhere near as expensive as, let's say, the 2080 Ti. And, you know, that basically means that AMD can step in and really challenge, uh, and can really challenge Nvidia in the mainstream gaming market, like the 200 to 300 or maybe even $400 market is really prime for AMD to take a chunk out of. 
We say that without really knowing what the RTX 2060 is capable of. Obviously, there have been some leaks of that, and it's roughly sitting in the performance of the of the GTX 1070 Ti. And the pricing, supposedly, for the 2060 is going to be around the 350 US dollar mark. But even so, uh, AMD still have a really good opportunity to compete with NVIDIA right there. So either way, at least in my opinion, AMD really have a lot to gain during 2019. So let's just hope that the company do manage to be as competitive as possible because quite honestly, it makes things a lot more interesting for the market. There's so many discussions right now that you can have regarding the best processor. And this is getting slightly off topic, but let's talk about a video editor, like someone who creates uh, content, not necessarily professionally, but they do encoding quite a lot. Maybe they're a streamer, Maybe they, you know, have a side business where they do wedding videos or whatever. They also play video games, but they also really need a decent processor for their business. And back in the day, it used to be really simple. You would just go with an Intel HEDT uh, processor, but it's not like that now. You can, you can get a really compelling rig by just going with like a 2700X or a 2600X. Or if gaming is really important, you do have the disposable income and you do want the minimum frame rates, you can pick up a 9900K because Adobe Premiere really does like clock speed. Or you could go ahead and pick up Threadripper or you could pick up an Intel HEDT system. Basically, my point is that while it is more confusing and certainly some of the options are not exactly cheap, you have processes which are like a thousand or fifteen hundred US dollars or more. The fact is, it's great that we have that discussion. We can have that discussion because the core count for Intel's mainstream, along with, of course, AMD's uh, mainstream, has risen. And we all know that that's because of competition. Competition is great for the marketplace. So I really, really hope from the bottom of my heart that 2019's CES uh, provides us even more competition because obviously that helps to keep prices at a more reasonable level. And now we're going to have what is most likely the final update to the Lenovo laptop situation. In case you missed it, around six months or so ago, the website laptopmedia.com reported that a Lenovo laptop featured a GTX 1160 graphics card. And then basically those rumors resurfaced and there was a lot of confusion of whether it really was an 1160, whether it was just a typo and it was supposed to be a 2060, whether it was because it was a naming confusion issue or what was going on. So um, I was contacted by Simeon over at laptopmedia.com because he wanted to clear up the confusion regarding the naming of the graphics cards in the Legion laptop. I'm going to read this out the best I can verbatim but he does reveal a few of his sources and obviously I don't want to get those sources in trouble, but you will get uh, the closest I can to verbatim of his quote. So he said, and I quote, that uh, when he wrote the news about the GTX 1160, they, meaning his sources, didn't know the exact name of the next generation NVIDIA cards, so he was waiting for more information, but the chances are that the Legion will be released with a GTX 2050 slash 2060, not a GTX 1160. And then he goes on to say that that's why I changed the GPU in the laptop media specs system. He was then told by another source that NVIDIA are working on something more, and he's waiting more information regarding that, but he does not think that that uh, product will be an 1160. So while Simeon's uh, response to us does shed light into exactly what happened with LaptopMedia.com's website, there is still a missing piece to the puzzle, and that is why Lenovo's website was still listing the Legion series of laptops to have a GTX 1160. It has since been updated to remove all mention of this particular GPU and it also does not list a 20 series either. The most likely possibility here is that whoever put the uh, page together on the website simply did not have the updated information, but until CES 2019 all we can do is speculate. And now let's discuss consoles, specifically a next generation system not by Sony, not by Microsoft or even Nintendo, but instead the folks behind 
the Project Cars series of games along with Need for Speed Shift, Slightly Mad Studios. Their upcoming console, which is going to be launched in around three years, according to the studio itself, is going to be known as the Mad Box. And, well, why is it known as the Mad Box, I hear you say? Well, it's not just a play on the studio's name, but it also is a reference, a pun, because of just how ridiculously powerful the system is, at least according to the studio. So Mark Bell actually revealed the existence of this console on Twitter, which is kind of unusual given the system's not going to launch for around three years. Now, they don't have exact components selected right now. They're in early talks with manufacturers of components, so we can probably presume that means NVIDIA, that means AMD, that means Intel, and so on. And they are, of course, probably trying to negotiate the best price and performance ratio. But in terms of pricing, they say it's going to be equivalent of what their competitors do charge. In terms of performance, well, according to the studio anyway, it's going to drastically outperform other systems. So it's going to outperform, let's say, the PlayStation 5 or the next Xboxes. I say Xboxes because obviously there's multiple SKUs in the Xbox lineup. Now, according to the studio, once again, we are looking at 4K, 60 FPS, quite manageable, and VR up to 120 hertz, and the system will indeed be a standalone console. According to him, the company will not look for crowdsource funding for the system. Instead, they have several independent investors already lined up, and they're still negotiating the final terms of the investment of those uh, investors, according to the company, but still it's looking promising. I will be curious how all of this works, like how will they go about securing exclusives from the likes of Ubisoft and Electronic Arts and Square, because, well, obviously that's kind of a really big deal, right? Um, first party games are definitely important, but you also need to make sure that you have a steady stream of third party games, because after all, look at what happened with the Wii U. It's kind of crazy in a way because you almost expect Valve to have pulled this move back in the day when we heard so much about Steam Machines instead of course Steam Machines have all but fizzled out and no longer really a thing. There's not enough information here to really know more about what the system is going to be capable of and of course how many developers it's going to get on board because obviously how easy it is to develop for, how easy it is to port games, what the ecosystem's like, even little things like oh, I don't know how easy the dashboard is to navigate and what the pricing of online uh, gaming would be, assuming they even charge anything. And, you know, all of those little things like, is the system going to have a disk drive, whether it's going to be as uh, purely digital, all of those are definitely going to make a fact, uh, be a large factor on whether the system is finally going to be uh, successful or whether we're going to just see it flop. But either way, more competition, as I said earlier, is definitely a good thing. I just will be curious whether they're going to manage to actually be competitive when, at that point anyway, the next generation consoles will be well underway. Scarlet and its family will certainly have a lot of games available. It's going to be curious whether the studio actually manages to compete against the likes of Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo, because at the point it's going to launch, the PlayStation 5, the next generation Xbox, and whatever Nintendo were working on will have hit their stride. It's around one to two years after a system launches that people really feel that the system is worth purchasing because obviously more games will have come out by that point. Developers would have gotten to grips of the system and uh, graphics will have improved and so on and so on. And with already free systems vying for your money, it's going to be you know, a tough sell for them. But that doesn't mean they can't sell the system, particularly, once again, if they can get that very important developer support. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.